Welcome back to uh, this uh, second part of this class uh, about the central nervous system and the brain. So today, now we are going to look at the electroencephalogram or EEG and what it means and what, what it measures, right? So the electroencephalograph uh, is going to measure brain activity. So this means that it's going to measure the activity of large group of neurons that are going to fire action potentials. So specifically, what it measures is the membrane potential or let's say that is the change in the membrane potential in the post synaptic neuron. Okay, and this is done uh, through the placement of electrodes in our brain. And we have uh, two types of electrodes, so we have bipolar and unipolar. And these electrodes, they are going to be placed in different parts of our brain. So let's go back to our brain here, right? So here we have one electrode, and here we have another electrode, right? And what these electrodes are going to measure, they are going to measure waves or mental waves, okay? So let's look a bit at the uh, waves and the different elements that are going to measure how we can recognize in these um, brain waves. So in a brain wave, we are going to have uh, two different concepts that are important. First one is the amplitude. So how big uh, these waves are. And second, we have the frequency, which is how many waves per second we are going to have. And these two parameters, the amplitude and the frequency, they are going to be very important to determine the different types of waves that we have uh, in our brain. So we are going to have four different types. Uh, so we have uh, first the alpha, we have the beta, we have the theta, and also we have the delta. And we are going to uh, take a look at what uh, all these uh, different waves mean. So we can distinguish these uh, four different types of waves through the frequency, the gigahertz, and the amplitude. But we are going to focus especially in the frequency. So the first type of waves at a frequency of 40 to 30 waves per sec are going to have the beta waves. Okay. So these uh, waves here, they are very frequent, and they are going to indicate mental activity. Yeah, we are thinking about other stuff, right? Then the second type of uh, waves, according to the frequency, are going to be at a frequency of eight to 13 waves per sec, and these are going to be the alpha waves. So the alpha waves uh, have uh, two different sections. So we have here this section here. So this will be when our eyes are uh, closed. And then we have another section here in which our eyes are open. So we can use uh, these, and this is one of the hands-on lab practicals that I have in my, in my undergraduate course. Uh, we can close our eyes, measure the waves, and see the difference between eye closed and eyes open. Then we continue, and the next is going to be at a frequency of four to seven hertz, and these are the theta waves. Something like this. So these are going to indicate a slipping. A 
finally, at a frequency of uh, 3.5 hertz or less, we are going to have the delta waves. So in these ones, these are very uh, low frequency and high amplitude waves. So they are going to indicate deep sleeping. So these are the waves that we generate when we are at the deep uh, section of our sleeping. And these are very important because they are going to help us uh, to uh, diagnose diseases, for example, epilepsy. Cool, uh, so we have a uh, look at the basics of the electroencephalogram. We are going to uh, look at the electrodes, the different types of waves and what we are measuring, and then uh, the uh, beta, alpha, theta, and delta waves and what they mean and what processes we can record through them. So now we are going to go into the Alzheimer's disease part of this lecture. Give me one sec that I get rid of this. Hello everyone and welcome to the last part of this lecture about the central nervous system. So now after looking at the brain and also looking at the electroencephalogram, we are going to look at Alzheimer's disease and what are the molecular causes by, uh, that cause this disease and the uh, cognitive decay that is associated to Alzheimer's. Also, I'm going to talk about what is known today in 2023. And uh, we are, I'm going to, at the end, uh, I'm going to focus a bit at the first FDA approved drug against al Alzheimer's that is called uh, Lequenby that has really uh, good and efficacious results in uh, clinical studies. So uh, first of all, the whole process of Alzheimer's is going to start in the neurons. So here we have our neuron. So here in the neural membrane, there is a very special protein that is called the amyloid precursor protein. So this amyloid precursor protein is going to be cleaved or processed by uh, two different enzymes. There are the beta secretase and the gamma secretase. So these two enzymes are going to cleave this amyloid precursor protein and it's going to be freed from the cell membrane into the extracellular space. And this is going to be the beta amyloid So the beta amyloid protein is uh, the starter of this disease, okay? So the beta amyloid protein, uh, when our brain is in good conditions, when we are young, uh, this uh, protein here is going to be cleared by uh, two different systems. So it's going to get cleared by the glial cells, uh, for example, the microglia and the um, uh, astrocytes. And also it's going to get cleared through the circulation. But when we get old, and this is one of the hypotheses why this happened, when we get old, our uh, vascularization in the brain decreases and uh, our uh, blood vessels kind of clean this beta amyloid protein that efficiently. And when the cleaning of that beta amyloid protein happens, this beta amyloid protein is going to aggregate and it's going to create the beta amyloid plaques. So the beta amyloid plaques are very important because they are going to be the central cause of Alzheimer's and they are going to exacerbate and enhance this process uh, through three different mechanisms. So the first mechanism is by inhibiting synapses. So here we have the presynaptic neuron and here we have the postsynaptic neuron and here we have the synapses. So the accumulation of the plaques from the beta amyloid protein here are going to inhibit these synapses between the two neurons. The 
The second process that we have is inflammation. So as uh, the beta amyloid protein is going to accumulate and form flakes, then the cells of the, gla of the glia that are going to clean the uh, beta amyloid protein in a normal circumstance are going to act as an immune cells, and, and they, are, uh, they don't know what to do, they want to clear it, so they are going to start secreting inflammatory cells uh, to have this process of chronic inflammation. So this chronic inflammation is also going to result in reactive oxygen species and the increase of uh, inflammatory molecules, for example, uh, cytokines uh, like uh, beta, uh, interleukin beta and alpha, and that's going to uh, enhance the process of cell death and neuronal death. And finally, we have the process of the phosphorylation of the tau protein. So the tau protein is a really interesting protein that forms part of the cytoskeleton in the cell. So we have the neuron here and the cytoskeleton, and we have uh, the tau protein being part of the microtubules. So uh, this, um, uh, this process of uh, beta amyloid protein uh, clamping and forming the plaques is going to phosphorylate this tau protein. So the phosphorylation is going to cause the release of the tau protein, but also the tau protein is going to bind to each other forming these neurofibular tangles. So these tangles are made of a phosphorylated tau protein they are going to contribute to the whole process as well of Alzheimer's and they are going to synergistically collaborate uh, to uh, the uh, cognitive decline that is initiated through the plagues. So as I uh, uh, said before, we are also going to look at the mechanism of the new drug that has been um, uh, recently approved by the FDA. So this drug is called uh, Lecambi. So Lequembi is a monoclonal antibody, and this monoclonal antibody is going to uh, selectively, uh, selectively bind to the beta amyloid protein so our body can clear it more efficiently. So this uh, Lequembi, uh, the monoclonal antibody, is going to bind very specifically to the beta amyloid protein and the plaques uh, so our body can identify those and eliminate them uh, quickly, quicker and more efficiently. Okay, perfect. So I hope that you enjoyed this part of the lecture and the whole lecture of today about the brain, uh, the electroencephalogram, and also the molecular mechanism behind Alzheimer's disease. Uh, I hope that you enjoy, and I see you next week with another lecture. Thank you.